What's going on guys, it's your boy Ferg here with Team COG coming at you with a deck profile. We're going to have a few of these this week. We came to the LCS event. There's about, what did they say, 86 people? Eight, oh no, 84. 84 people. Uh, we were all masked up, don't worry. We followed all guidelines and all that fun stuff. Mask on. Mask time. on and everything. They were very strict with everything. Temps every round, so... I am with event. Ramiro. He got top 16 at this event. Yeah, what's up? It was impressive. I actually had, went up against him once. He uh, he got me. He got me. Answered UTC like no one's business. Oh, he, he had, had it on the pulse. Yeah. So, All right. What are we playing today? And so we we're playing uh, Spellcaster Spellbooks. Um, the whole concept of the deck is literally normal summon Blue Boy or normal summon any of the Magistus monsters or Dogmatica and just plus one from there and just went off of advantage. Um, it worked out really well, not only that, but the deck can go first or second. By going first, we set up all the disruption we need, or the or what I like to call the wind to pass, basically, going first. Going second, we just break your board with Nadir Servants and Spellbook of Fates and stuff like that. So we can go into more detail if you guys want a little bit later. Let me just go through the deck profile so you guys can see. So like I said, we play the three blue boy. For players who don't know what it does, when it's normal summer or flip, I get to add one spellbook spell card from my deck to my hand, which then just generates all the advantage there. And it's a spellcaster level two, so we can link it away for the new Magistus Link one monster, which can help us set up for more combos. Another starter is the new Magistus engine. We play only four of them because um, his ability, the, re the fire one, is that you can target himself to equip a Magistus uh, monster from your extra deck to itself. And then what the Magistus equip does is that you get to add a Magistus monster from deck to hand, you add this guy. Then you use his effect while he's equipped, special summon a level 4 spellcaster from your hand or graveyard. You special summon the guy you search. So he just sets up turn 1 dweller, turn 1, uh, turn one anything really, but I, just, I go with dweller with him. He's just a really strong starter at that. So we go with that. For the rest of the spellcasters, of course, we do play the Dogmatic Engine because they're all spellcasters, so they all have synergy. With three, Ecclesi with three Ecclesia, which searches everything. A lot of players prefer two or one. I prefer three Florida Lease. Um, my, my reasoning behind Florida Lease is that if I see it turn one and I'm going first, it's an extender. Because all I have to do is normal summon Blue Boy, search, link one, special summon, Florida Lease, link two, into Crowley, and then search for more pieces. That's what made this card extremely strong, and he helps you push for game, which is what matters in this game. Oh, yes. One Maximus, because no one's signing for the Maximus anymore, and if they do, that's fine. You don't care. As long as you set up Winda, you're fine, because the whole idea of this deck is Winda Pass, and that's how it does. And then, of course, the round of the monsters, Triple Souls. Um, Souls is MVP in this deck. Every single Dogmatica monster except for Ecclesia are level 8, so you can send them from deck to grave for cost, which then helps you set up Spellbook of Life to Monster Reborn, the Maximus, and then just to keep going with play. So it makes Maximus more consistent. And then also, there are some Spellbook spell cards where you need their dead in hand, and these unclog that, so it's really strong. Heck yeah. All right, on to the spells, which matters. This, the spell cards is what makes the deck. Three Nadir Servant, we all know what it does. It's a plus one going first. Or it's uh, break your board going second, so it's really strong. Three secrets. Um, secrets adds one spellbook, one spellbook card from your deck to your hand. You can add blue boy. You can add any other spell card, which continues the advantage in all your pluses. Triple knowledge. Knowledge. You can send a spellbook spell card on your side of the field, or in your hand to the graveyard, or a spellcaster from your side of the field to the graveyard to draw two cards. That um, this card just gives you plus one advantage, and that's all you really want. You normally send the link one Magistus monster. We play Spellbook of Power as a one of. Uh, Spellbook of Power, you only need it as a one of because you can search it easily. And what makes this card so strong is if you're going second and you clear the opponent's board, this plus Lord of Lease equals 4,000 to the face, and that cuts their opponent's li um, high points in half. And if you have a Lord of Lease, if you have an Ecclesia and a Maximus, that's 8,000 right there, no problem. One Eternity. Eternity adds a banished Spellbook spell card from your banished zone back to your hand so you can recycle more cards. Spellbook of Mastery. Um, basically, if you control a spellbook, if you control a spellcaster type monster, reveal a spellbook from your hand, target a spellbook from the graveyard, copy its effects. So you can copy any of these effects right here, and to keep going. And that's what makes it so strong because it's not. It does. It makes it like a not once per turn. Spellbook of Life. Spellbook of Life is a very interesting card. It's a searchable monster reborn. Again, combine this with Souls equals Maximus turn one easily, which gives you, well, let's be honest, window pass. Um, three, Spellbook of Fate. Now this card is the most versatile card ever printed in my opinion. It has three special effects. I can bet its first effect is 
Yeah. Um, I can banish a spellbook spell card from my graveyard to bounce back a set card. Effect number two, I can banish two of them to flip a monster face down or, fl or flip a monster face up. Or effect number three, which is the most important, I can banish three spellbook spell cards, banish a card an opponent controls. Does not target, can activate during the battle phase because it's a quick effect, which then helps us answer cards like UTC under miscellaneous, helps us answer all problematic cards, which is really strong. Also Dragoon, because it does not target. To round up the spells, we play three Book of Moons. I really like Book of Moon a lot. Book of Moon, I think, just answers a lot of a lot of problematic monsters. Uh, for example, against Prey Kids, you can Book of Moon their um, their butler, and they can no longer tribute blow up the board. You could stop the normal summon. You could stop Zoo on their normal summon. It's like really powerful, really strong card, and I and I, it does a lot going second too. It helps you break boards. Now to the trap cards. Three impermanence because impermanence negates everything and doesn't care about tactical talents, so it's really good. And it's good going first or second. Two punishment. Um, punishment just says I'm going to break your board or I'm going to kill a monster, send Titanclad, and then build my advantage again. Just keep going. And then, of course, the one schism because we're going window pass. That's all we want. Window too strong. And that's what this deck likes to do. And if we don't go window, that's fine. Our board, if we don't end with window, our board is um, is one small book of fate, one dogmatic of punishment, with a Florida lease in hand, with Ecclesia, and that's about all you really need, with a book of moon sometimes. And then that's enough disruptions there. So if you can't go window pass, that's fine. Just make sure you have enough disruptions where it doesn't matter. And I can confirm, he definitely did. Oh. <laughs> all right, on to the extra deck. We play two of the Magesis Equip Monster. I already explained what this card does, but I can go over it again. Basically, um, I could, I could, it's a Link 1 that requires one level for a lower spellcaster type monster. So that's anything. Uh, not only that, but well, the reason why we play is because she's a spellcaster. What we normally would do is summon Blue Boy, get our advantage going, Link Blue Boy away into her, activate Ecclesia from the hand, special summon, search everything, activate Split Book of Knowledge, send this from the deck, send this to the graveyard, draw two, special summon Maximus by banishing this, and now you have window set up. That's really the only reason, but it does have another utility combined with um, this guy right here. Basically, with him, again, you can you could summon him, equip here with his effect, use her effect to search for another Magesis monster, and then effect especially summon from the hand or graveyard, level 4 spellcaster, which then adds just more synergy and just adds more advantage. So there's that. One Crowley, because Crowley helps with the spellbook engine, helps us keep going, and that's what we want to do. Um, one Dweller, we all know what Dweller does. One Babuska, Babuska is just a good floodgate against other rogue decks. One Window. So these are all the monsters we go into. These are the monsters we actually summon. The rest of the extra deck cards are just utility cards that we use to sense the graveyard. Which you're about to find out right now. That being Double Titan Clad, with searches and or, and or special summons anything. Double Totally Awesome. Now the reason why we play this is because Toad went into the graveyard, we can add back a water monster from our grave back to our hand. And Blue Boy is in fact Blue Boy is in fact a water monster, so we can recycle it when we have to to keep playing. And is he the only level two you run on this deck? He's the only level two we need, honestly. Got we it. can't we can't make him. But that's that we're not trying to make him, we're trying to send him to oh, recycle that's right. That's right. so we can recycle Blue Boy and then normal summon Blue Boy and keep playing. That's why we like it. It's basically these two are basically your utility. Of course we round up the rest of the Shawlet engine because these help you go into window. Again, the deck likes to say window pass. And then for the final utility card, the card I'm so happy that I'm playing three of is Nathis. Now players say two, players say one. I say three because we're playing Maximus, so he helps you blow up more problematic cards. Not only that, we're playing two punishment. So it's good to blow up two cards at the same time and Nathis is just extremely powerful. In my opinion, I think it's a four of. Some, if you want to play two, fine, but I do recommend playing three. Like, it's really powerful. Very nice. So that's the extra. Um, we can go and decide if you guys want. It's nothing Absolutely. too... Absolutely. There's nothing too special, really. It's just three cosmic, three lightning storms that my my teammates are letting me borrow, so it's pretty good. Very nice. Three evenly match. Three Nibiru. Those are coming out. They're horrible. I don't like them anymore. I kind of, it kind of dawned on me today too. I'm like, man, Nib never really came it, up. It, it, not that it ever came up, but it never did enough. That's or the problem. I, or I would die to my own token. Yeah. Oh yeah, like oh, how we did. Yeah. Oh man. In time, uh, we got Feather Duster for more back row hate. One Scythe, one Sanctum. I only do the one one. I don't think it's that good either. Um, if I have to change anything, it would be these five cards, just for anything to help me go first or second. So it's really. basically like another window without having to go into window. So. Basically, yeah. If, if I can't go window pass or dweller pass, then I go scythe pass. That's Absolutely. basically the idea. 
but again i don't think this does enough anymore so i might drop i might just drop these five i don't know for what that's the problem i might have to do some more test playing see what i prefer but these i would keep the same because they're just too strong and yeah that's about everything all right i think it's question time what were your uh, worst matchups today do you think my worst matchup will have to be um uh, diatron only because they always seem to draw me twice which really made me angry like my only two losses were diatron but i did beat diatron as well um so against the diatron i lost to was because they draw me twice uh -huh. and then against the other one i bricked really hard i opened a double book of moon double impermanence no starter so there was really nothing i could do on that one um when it comes to my most easiest matchup honestly it, ha it has to be between um Myst I, I took on mystic mystic mind burn which is kind of weird but i think that was the easiest matchup i had today but everything else was either meta or like high level rogue tier like dinosaurs um prank kids again like those are the ones i took on a lot too i took on grand manju which i don't really care for grand manju i just got to banish him boom him face down or just Bring off Lord Elise during the main phase and make his attack zero zero and doesn't matter anymore. So like I took I took on a, a good amount of rogue and meta and did, I think my deck is really well. Did you ever have to play Virtual World? Uh, I played against Virtual World and testing, but I never played testing. it in the tournament. Uh, Virtual World is a is an okay matchup. It's not bad, but it's not good either. It just really depends if if I can get my spellbook engine going, then I win. But if I can't, then I lose. That's basically how the deck works. If you can't get the spellbook engine going or the dogmatica engine going, you kind of lose. But luckily, almost every single card in the deck is like a co multiple copies. For example, like Blue Boy and Secrets, they're like that's like six copies of the same of the same card right there. So you're bound to see one of them. Same thing comes with the Dogmatica cards, like the Dear Servant and Ecclesia. They're like six of the same cards. Absolutely. As long as I can get one of those engines going, I'm fine. And the same thing goes with the Magistus engine. Like if I just open a Magistus, I can go Magistus um, into Dweller Pass, and Virtual World can't do anything about that either. And it's like that's what I also like about about the about the Magistus engine. It's just a one card combo, one card Dweller at all times. Yes, I'm I'm working on a deck here. It's not to mimic yours, just yeah. try to utilize it. But I'm I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Hey, bro, if you want to mimic it, go ahead, man. I might. Go ahead. I don't know yet. It'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> so last question. Yeah. If you were to make any changes to this deck after what you've experienced, what you've gone through today, what would it be in the main deck? If it has to be in the main deck, I'm considering dropping the in, either the impermanence or the um i really think it, it might have to be the impermanence the impermanence for a triple droll yes. just so i don't just so i don't have to just so i don't auto lose against um diatron when they go first again we can break diatron's board if it um sometimes not all the time it's very inconsistent to break it it's like the one deck i can't figure out how to break boards with every other deck i could break the board not caring right but impermanence might be the one thing i'll drop for either um draw and lockbird or dark ruin no mores honestly or maybe even um forbidden chalice if i can not for, uh, forbidden droplets if i can droplets yeah just because Ooh. droplets can hit multiple cuts them in half and i can just beat over them is really that just, sounds expensive. I, dude, you saw everything here. All the all, ulties. All, all the ulties, all the Dogmanica cards, like Nadir there, Servants alone. Then, then, then I saw the, uh, com were those Common Book of Moons? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's not, yeah, Common Book of Moons. For, for, I, now, for, for, now, now, for now, for now, for now, for now, for now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what it is. Uh, I also have to say thanks to my teammates at, on Team Absolutely. PLG. A lot of the t a lot of the test playing we did there, we found out what, what this deck can do. A lot, of, a lot of us had no fate. When I came up with the idea with this deck, we had no fate in it. But then we take it to locals, and I kept topping with the deck. I either won or came out second place in the tournament every time. Um, the deck's really strong. The deck, I think its number one advantage is that a plus one consistently like strikers, but it also it's hard for, for players to answer because if you ask Blossom a card, that doesn't really matter because we have six Absolutely. other cards that do the exact same thing and we just keep going. That's why I tried Turbo Droll. I'm like, I don't, I don't care about Ash right now. Where's my Droll? Yeah. <laughs> and that's all I have to say really for the deck now. Yeah. Perfect. Well, man, yeah. I appreciate it. I, I, I did enjoy playing against it. Kind of opened my eyes a little bit that I can play anything. There's anything. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to what? The tournament. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome again to. Uh, 
Honestly, I gotta say thank you to the guys who did the L the LC LCS. LCS, yeah. CLS. Uh, CLS. The call, CLS? Yeah, wow, call, yeah, yeah Colorado Legacy, Legacy Series. It's basically our own like version of the AR ARG for Colorado players. Hey, but just because you're not a Colorado player doesn't mean you can't come down. Please come down. Absolutely. I would love to play against any pro player out there to test this thing out even more. Absolutely. Man, I would literally love I don't care if I get my ass kicked as long as like we get more people because I want to prove this deck is a deck. And I don't think I really love this concept. I'm in love with spell books and everything about it. Again, man, I appreciate the profile. Appreciate how in depth you went. That yeah. it helps me out. Of course, bro. Ain't no problem there. Again, hey, deck's expensive, but a lot of the cards are have lower rarity. So if you want to play the deck, do it. Absolutely. It's not no problems there, fans. Perfect. And All with right. that being said, this has been Ferg with Team COG. I hope to catch you next time.